Hey guys, Anthony Pietroponi here back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the top five ways to go ahead and build your wealth in your 20s. I've got a lot of messages lately on how to achieve financial freedom as early on as possible, because like you guys know, you're gonna to wanna to save and invest as much as you can as early on as possible to go ahead and set yourself up for life. So if you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market, you're going to want to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it at the end, and let's dive into it. The first thing you want to do is get some sort of job or, or steady source of income. If you're 19, 20, 21, don't worry so much about the money in the beginning. Choose something you're passionate about or something you can learn the most from. Like with myself as an example, I didn't start my business right away. The first thing I actually did was I got a job promoting the school bar at my college campus because I was shy. I wanted to build confidence. I wanted to meet people and network. So this forced me out of my comfort zone. I was forced to talk to people daily and approach them and introduce myself. So I chose that job and that helped me become way more social. It helped me meet a lot of people, which actually helped me get way more clients because I was known all over the campus by talking to so many people. My job every day was to talk to people on the campus. So after one year of doing that, I knew most people or everyone knew me. I was running my online coaching business at the same time. And what do you think happened after that? I got a lot of clients and I built up my business because of that. But with the promotions job, I was making about $1,000 a month. But with my business, while also in school, I was making another one to $2,000 a month. And this was just a job experience. I was able to go ahead and network. That was a huge game changer, a stepping stone that I implemented when I was just 19, 20 years old. When you're in your early 20s, focus on an income source that's going to give you the lessons that you need to propel you into the future. So that way you're able to take those lessons and earn more later on. The second method is going to be to start up a side hustle or run your own business. And there's plenty of ways to do this. You can search up online. Ideally go with something that is lean. There's not a lot of overhead expenses. I started my online fitness coaching business because I was passionate about helping people improve their body. For me, it was a, it was a normal segue, but for you, you could search up things, topics you're passionate about. You can, you can start a drop shipping store. There's endless opportunities in today's society. What this is going to do is give you the extra source of income to invest more in the future, but also give you some more skills so that way you can scale a business and do things on your own. What would be the ideal scenario is you have the job, you have the income source, you now stack on the side hustle where you're working on it on outside job hours. Maybe you have the nine to five job and then you work on your side hustle for three hours later at night. You do this and if you can scale the side hustle, then eventually you could transition away from the job and use the capital to deploy into other areas and have more income streams. With myself as an example, when I was 21, I was working as a personal trainer. I was running my online fitness coaching business and then I also got a job at Orange Theory Fitness teaching classes. Then I dropped the job as a personal trainer and then I ended up training people in their house as another source of income. So I was training people in their house earning one to $2,000 a month. I had a job at Orange Theory Fitness earning another $2,000 a month or sometimes more. And then I also ran my online fitness coaching business, which was the largest income source that was earning me anywhere from 4,000 to $5,000 in the beginning. And then what happened was I ended up scaling that over the next one, two years and getting that to over $10,000 a month, still keeping the job earning $2,000 a month and still training people in their house earning another $1,000 a month. Now, bonus tip here is to have the flows actually mesh because when I was training at Orange Theory Fitness teaching classes, I was meeting people that needed help with nutrition. I was getting new prospects and new clients from my job. So the job was feeding the income for the business as well as the other side hustle of training people one-on-one -on -one in their house. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take risks. Don't avoid risk in your 20s. There's plenty of time to catch up if something does go wrong, but I can't stress enough how important it is to take risks as early on as possible. You learn so much from them and they shape you as a person. My risk that I took was I was in school for human kinetics, basically kinesiology, and because I wasn't interested in the human body. Initially, I wanted to be going to school to be a physiotherapist, and then I changed my mind to being a chiropractor. While running my online coaching business, I decided that it wasn't for me. So I took one year off school to try to grow my online fitness coaching business that I was running while I was in school. So I was running my side hustle while in school. My parents looked at it as, yeah, this is something you're doing short term. And I even looked at it as something like, yeah, this is something I'm doing short term. I like it right now. So I'm going to keep flowing with it and see where this takes me. I'm not going to do this forever, but this is what I want to do for right now. My parents respected it. They supported it. And they said, do whatever you want to do. I took a year off school, focused on the business, immediately grew the income from $2,000 a month to $6,000 a month. Hired a business coach because I also took a risk by investing half of the money I had into a Grant Cardone mentorship program. So 
I had about $3,000 and I put a little over $1,000 into this program, a 12 week program where you fly to Vegas and you learn all about sales. I did that. I invested in myself. That changed the trajectory of my entire life. That kind of risk, taking the time away from school, paying for a mentorship program, getting guidance, learning from the best, those two risks combined built the confidence in myself and helped me meet new people that would help me bet more on myself to take it to the next level. And without those risks, I could have finished school, had a job, and definitely would not have been where I am today. So I'm really thankful that I took those risks when I was 20 and 21 years old. The fourth thing you wanna do is invest. This could be stocks, this could be crypto, this could be real estate. If you're just starting out, definitely look into investing into stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, diversified funds that average anywhere from a 10 to a 15% return each year. When it comes to investing, those who can delay gratification the longest win in the long run. So you have to really focus on, hey, I'm doing this to improve my future. So let's put as much money as I can into investments because I know in five, 10, 20 years, this amount is gonna be much larger. Now, you can also invest in crypto. Personally, I like to only invest into Bitcoin or Ethereum. You can do lots of research on crypto and do your own investments and hold them for long term. But in my opinion, I like to only look at Ethereum or Bitcoin. And for stock market investing, if you're just getting started, you're going to want to just stick with the ETFs or, or diversified funds. We're talking about investing in the NASDAQ or investing in the Dow or investing into technology funds. There's a lot of different options. And if you have any questions on that, just leave in the comments below and I can make future videos on what kind of stocks or what kind of funds to possibly invest in. But for now, do your own research and you can find basically everything you need to know on YouTube. Now let's not forget about real estate. You're going to want to do some sort of house hacking or buy a duplex if you know you're gonna live in a certain area for the next three to five years at least. What's so game changing about this is you get to leverage your money. If you're in the US, you can use a three and a half percent down payment. So if you're looking at a $500,000 home, that's just gonna be about $18,000 and you can use that amount to own and control a half a million dollar asset where real estate can appreciate 5%, 10% some years. So you're looking at at least $25,000 a year in appreciation if you buy the right home. And because when you do that, you buy that home, you get involved into it, you can rent out another unit if there is a duplex, you can rent out a bedroom, to a friend and you can have that payment actually pay for your mortgage or pay for most of your living expenses. In some cases, you can get the full mortgage and any, any taxes paid off with the rent where all the appreciation is, is gravy and that rent is paying down the mortgage. So this is a huge, easy way to start investing because if you think about it, you're using $18,000 down of your own money and you're controlling the half a million dollar asset where you're living for free or you're paying a little bit in bills. Let's say you lose $500 a month for living expenses. Well, you only lost $6,000 in one year and you would have lost that anyways if you were renting somewhere else. You would have lost even more actually. But the house also appreciates at $25,000 a year. Well, now your gain each year is $19,000. That's a 100% return on your money every year and the house appreciates even more in the future, so it'll grow to even more returns over the years. The fifth, final, and most important of all five to make sure that we actually get wealthy in our 20s is to live like you're broke. This is a hard one. Whenever we increase our income, we're so tempted to also increase expenses. The more money we make, the more we change the way we look at things and the things we actually look at. So we buy more expensive things. It's called lifestyle inflation. And it's actually very hard to suppress. If you can increase your income while keeping your expenses the same, you have a much larger cushion to put into investments and think of that as fuel on the fire to speed up the process so that way you don't have to wait nearly as long to have all your desires. The way I do it is I look at how much money I have invested and I look at the cost of whatever it is I wanna buy. And I say, how much money do I need to have invested for the investments to actually go ahead and pay for this thing that I wanna buy. And if I can do that, then I go ahead and make the purchase once I get to that level. Clear example, easy example for me is with my car. I bought the Tesla Model S, the long range, refreshed version, and in Canadian dollars, after all the tax and everything, it came to $140,000. I made an agreement to myself earlier on that I would wait till I have 10 times the money invested and then I changed that to 20 times the money invested. So now once I have 2.8 million, I'm able to buy the car. 
I got to that number, so I bought the car again. Whereas I ordered the Tesla Plaid Model S last year, and then I canceled it. When I ordered it last year, I hit 1.8 million, and that was my peak. And I said, hey, I'm at 1.8 million. I have 10 times the amount Let's buy the car now. Reason why I said 10 times the amount is because if I can get a 10% return on my money each year, then that car is paid for in one year. I changed that to 20 times. So if I can now get a 5% return on my money, then the car is paid for. Or I can get two of these cars every single year. Once I'm at that level, then it's okay to buy this thing. So that's personally what I did. I also do this with things like jewelry. As long as I earn a certain multiple of the price in the same month, then I get the green light to buy it. If I, it's something I really like. There are no impulse decisions. I only buy things when it's a goal. So I will set the goal, say, there's something I want. I can't have it now because I'm not at that level yet. If I do this, 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 then I can now have this. Any big purchase. And you can also do this with things like going out for dinner if you do that excessively, or you like to buy clothes a lot. Run the numbers of how much it's costing you by buying it now. Because if you had invested that amount and you let it go for 20, 30 years, you'll see that that $200 would blow up to tens of thousands of dollars in the future. So every time you want those pair of shoes that cost $200, you might say, well, I can have those shoes now, or I can have $30,000 in 30 years. Do I want the shoes now or the $30,000 extra dollars later on? Once you do that enough, you'll brainwash yourself to really be a little more frugal. I'm not saying go completely frugal. The goal here is to just refrain from having your income go up from 50,000 to 100,000 and then increasing your expenses from 40,000 to 80,000 because that happens far more common than you think and it's something you want to keep your eye on. Those are my top five ways to build wealth the fastest in your 20s that have helped me achieve financial freedom and become a multimillionaire by 25. If you appreciate the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below which was your favorite of the five. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.